A few weeks ago, we witnessed Manic Mike of the infamous Trend Twins tear his pec while attempting a 585 pound PR on the bench press. Yeah, hold your Holy sh Come on. Oh, My ortho senses are tingling. You know interns, six plates per side is the kind of weight you expect to see on a squat rack for a reason. I mean, when you think about training chest from an evolutionary perspective, humans and our primate ancestors generally did a lot more pulling, climbing, and lifting more so than pushing. As such, it bugs me out a little when I see the pectoralis major under such immense strain. In the context of a bench one rep max, failure can be particularly crushing. Failure can be particularly crushing. Hold on, hold on. Before we let her rip, yeah. now listen. Please note, all depictions of trauma in today's video are contextualized in a lesson on human anatomy in accordance with YouTube's own community guidelines. Yes, I'm talking to you. YouTube reviewer, I'm talking to you. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for, this may at first seem somewhat innocuous, but pay attention to Mike's left pectoralis muscle on the right hand side of our screen. The chunky bugger looks like it's wriggling up into his chest like a hungry alien or something. Ouch. You see, our musculoskeletal system belies an incredible interplay between tension and release. Each muscle has at least two points of contact with the skeleton, known as the origin and the insertion point. So when muscles contract, they are literally pulling against our bone structure to create tension. These are the origins of the muscle. This is the tendon of insertion. When the tissue at one of these muscle attachment sites fails, in this case, the insertion point on Mike's humerus, the muscle fibers shoot towards the part of the skeleton where they remain attached. That is to say, Mike's sternum. Now, we categorize tendon injuries from grade one to three, where one is mild and three is fall off the bone good. Jokes aside, with enough force, a tendon can rip clean off the bone, which is precisely where my mind goes when Mike's pec shimmies toward his midline <laughs> with such force. Grade three tear, at least 50% of the tendon tissue compromised. Yeah, the surgeon said I don't need surgery, but if I ever wanna, if I don't want any imbalances and shit, then I gotta get surgery. And yes, as Mike explains here, surgery is quite necessary if he hopes to return to training to any comparable degree. Let's dive in for a closer look to deepen our understanding of what that might entail. At most origin and insertion points, there are several distinct areas where the injury can occur. The osteotendinous junction, where bone meets tendon, the musculotendinous junction, where tendon meets muscle, and the muscle fibers themselves that comprise the body of the muscle. Muscle fibers are elastic and arranged to distribute force across the entire surface area of the muscle, and as such, tears are less common here. Unfortunately for the OTJ and the MTJ, forces converge at the attachment sites, where the entire body of the muscle tapers into a much thinner strip of connective tissue. As you might expect, higher stress in these areas leaves the connective tissue more vulnerable to injury. This is precisely why our tendons are designed for maximum tensile strength, like thick ropes made of countless collagen fibers. They have one hell of a job to do. And the tendon is still connected. There's still some muscle there too. They gotta restitch the muscle to the tendon. So you're gonna do that with Kevlar fibers. Mike's description of the surgery that lies ahead tells us that the musculotendinous junction was the winner of the pec tear sweepstakes. From the sounds of it, the majority of the tendon remains attached to his humerus while the muscle body pulled away. The percentage of the tissue that was torn is still uncertain. We'd need a peek at his MRI to know for sure. What I can tell you is that a tear at the musculotendinous junction is much harder to repair than a tear at the osteotendinous junction, where only the tendon and its connection to the bone has been damaged. We have to contend with torn muscle tissue as it transitions into tendons and where pulling forces are the highest. Think about running sutures through a stake and then introducing low by pulling on them. The suture may be very strong, but the weak point in this interaction is the stake or muscle tissue, not the Kevlar fibers. What we'll typically do is take a piece of allograft tendon that is donor tissue from say an Achilles tendon and sandwich the muscle in it in such a way that the sutures pass through the tendon 
through the muscle and back through the tendon again, creating a firmer connection with the ruptured tissue. We then attach this Frankenstein meat stack to the tendon tissue on the other side. Which begs the question, what exactly does healing entail? Well, over time, host muscle and tendon cells migrate into the allograft, facilitating fusion, while new collagen fibers are deposited helping integration occur. And the repaired region becomes a hybrid structure, capable of significant strength and function with proper rehabilitation. So Mike, on behalf of your pectoralis major, please, please be patient. Because in the real world, once an injury occurs, there is no turning back the clock. Thankfully, for our learning purposes, this is a YouTube video. DJ, run that back. <laughs>
Take your time, bro. It is no coincidence that the recovery prognosis for a pec tear falls in the neighborhood of, you guessed it, six to 12 months. I'm about to be wiping bro's ass. And me off. Fellas, I don't know if we need to take it that far, but yes, recovery from a grade three pec tear surgery is quite the challenge. We're talking four to six weeks immobilization while healing begins followed by six to 12 weeks of range of motion and light strength, but no real weight lifting for four months and gradual, gradual reintroduction to load over the following six month period because damn it, <laughs> re-injury is a thing, yo. I don't know why, but I feel fine. My chest doesn't really hurt that much. So yeah, I can still do push-ups and sh For context, the surgery hasn't happened yet. And while I might have hoped to see Mike still in a sling here, he is a trend twin after all. Still, I feel the ortho urge to remind you all that push-ups preceding surgery will only make my job harder, likely necessitating a larger incision as we'll have to fish into Mike's flesh for the runaway end of ruptured tissue. Not the prettiest sight or the funnest activity, but hey, that's why they pay us the big bucks. It feels like something's out of place. So bunched up. I don't think it went under that much. Well, that remains to be seen. It's only an hour long surgery. I got beat off sessions longer than that. <laughs> Until a patient is under the knife, it can be quite difficult to assess the level of bunching that has occurred. On the brighter side, there are athletes who have suffered pec tears of similar magnitude who have returned to competition. You know, I tore my pec in 1993. I was, and I was gonna lead on to this actually. Yeah, the majority of my shows that I won was, yeah. it happened after the pec tear. Obviously, Kevin Lavrone, who the Trend Twins mentioned in their video, conquered the same injury mountain. And honestly, I'm rooting for Mike. Perhaps this experience will cause him to opt for more sustainable lifting and recovery choices in the future. Not to mention, the healing prognosis for tendons is far better in younger individuals in their 20s due to a multitude of factors. All is not lost. Interns, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave us a comment and give it a big thumbs up to feed the algorithm. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. And be sure to subscribe for more content that helps you understand human anatomy in an engaging way. We are now on our way to 700,000 subs and we would love to have you with us when we get there. If you didn't like the video, that's okay, but be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. I read as many comments as I can and we use your feedback to make our videos better for you. Don't forget to follow my gym, Human 2.0 Fitness, for free right here on YouTube, where we post content that helps you move better and prevent injury. Or it's sister channel, Human at Home, where you can learn how to be healthy right where you live. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.